wabarakatuh and very good morning. So, uh, welcome to the second week of the lecture uh, of uh, our topic on uh, basic of uh, electrical engineering. So, if we do a bit of revision, we know that last week we have seen uh, basically the uh, definition and uh, the unit of measurement for current and voltages. So, voltages it could be either uh, EMF or potential difference, right? So this is what we're going to do is basically the continuation of uh, following that definition. We will try to uh, understand how do we measure this current and voltages. And then uh, following from there, we're going to develop or try to discuss something related to the relation between both current and voltages. So it is basically about resistance. And we'll try to go uh, further into understanding what resistance and resistivity means and what do they depend on. Okay, so we will start with uh, basically uh, looking at how do we measure uh, the current and voltages. So we know that I think you might have been uh, through uh, several uh simple labs during high school or matriculation where you are tasked to measure currents and uh, voltages or potential difference so the device that uh, we use to measure current is what we call an ammeter so amps uh, comes from the unit of measurement that we discussed last week amperes right so it uses the same principle uh, as uh, what we call uh, galvanometer so what is galvanometer is basically uh, uh, dynamic or movement of a certain uh, certain pointer that is due to basically forces coming from the interaction of magnetic field and a con conductor carrying current. So basically, a moving conductor there is a moving conductor which is due to the current passes uh, when there are current passes through it and it is placed in a certain magnetic field, right? So basically, inside it usually what we have is uh, in in simple words. Uh, we have, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, a pair of magnets where you have, uh, therefore, a magnetic flux inside it, I mean, magnetic field inside it, and you have a conductor where you uh, pass through it the current that you want to measure. So we know that uh, when you have <coughs> a current circulating in a conductor that is placed in a magnetic field, what happens is there's going to be a force created, this is what we call a Lorentz force, uh, so the, the, the pointer that is attached to that uh, conductor will move about and uh, in function of that movement we basically we, uh, we create a scale to uh, to indicate uh, the, the level of current that is part that we have uh, passed through the, uh, the conductor okay so in uh, ammeter what we need to understand is that in order for the current to pass smoothly to create that uh, I mean a mechanical movement uh, we need uh, the current to pass uh, smoothly, so we need a uh, resistance that tends towards zero. So, uh, resistance uh, tends towards zero, and then in that conductor, uh, the current passed through it, so it created that force that, that moved the pointer, right? So, that was the basic principle. So, uh, as we know, as a uh, current by definition is flow rate, we can imagine if you want to measure flow rate uh, in analogy, imagine if you want to measure a flow rate of uh, of uh, a fluid inside a, a, a tube, what you need to do is basically you need to go inside that tube uh, to count uh, the uh, number of molecules of uh, fluid that goes through it. So uh, it's the same thing uh, that we can think of uh, about current. So if you want to measure how much current or, or how much charges that pass through that conductor uh, per second, for example, what you need to do is, to, is that you need to be inside uh, the conductor that's conducting the current that you want to measure so basically what you need to do is you need to be uh, in series what, call, what we call in series so imagine if this resistance you want to measure how much current that goes through the resistance you need to uh, to place an emitter in series with this resistance okay so uh, on uh, the other side a voltmeter is the instrument or the device that we use to measure voltages right so uh, it use uh, basically uh, in opposite to what we have in emitter, we need a very large resistance uh, that is placed in series with the galvanometer. So, basically, in principle, it's also a galvanometer, but instead of letting the current uh, pass through uh, the galvanometer, we don't want the current to pass through the galvanometer. We want all the current. So, imagine this is the uh, the circuit that we want to measure the the voltage or potential difference uh, across. So imagine this is the resistance 
and we want to measure the potential difference between uh, across the resistance what we need is basically we connect also a galvanometer but this time we connect it in parallel because remember by definition uh, uh, potential difference is basically uh, the comparison of energy so the difference of potential energy between two points so you need to measure it between two points and then what, when you connect a galvanometer between the two points so imagine we want to measure the voltage across the resistance what we want to do is that basically uh, we don't want the current to, uh, to to go pass through the galvanometer like in ammeter we want to measure just the potential difference so we want all the current to pass through the circuit and not into the galvanometer so if you want the current to pass through so e is the power supply for example so is the mf of the power supply if you want the current i to just circulate inside the circuit and not get into a galvanometer we need basically a large large resistance so a large resistance is placed in series with the galvanometer so uh, the current that will go through it is very very small it's a very small amount of uh, current uh, and the voltage is basically measured by what we call ohm law so you might have uh, learned about ohm law ohm law is basically the uh, proportionality between current and voltages so if you can measure the current the very very small current that goes into the galvanometer so the voltages is basically uh, the relationship in ohm law we will see in, in detail later but ohm law in simple words it is uh, the voltages u equals to resistance r multiplied by the current i so if you know the small small current small signal current that goes through this multiply by r then it, it will give us the potential difference of v or u in between uh, these two points okay so uh, the most important point that is that we need uh, in a voltmeter what we need is basically the resistance in that voltmeter so this whole thing galvanometer plus this large resistance is uh, voltmeter so we need the resistor to be tends toward infinity so we need the smallest current possible uh, that goes through it uh, close to no current because we, want, we don't want to disturb the, the operation of this circuit right so what we want to measure is just the potential difference between the two points uh, so as we can see it is placed is basically in parallel with the the resistor parallel means it's not inside the circuit it is outside the circuit and two points are put across the component on which we want to measure the, the potential difference or the voltage so uh, m meter in details uh, what we can see is that if you want to put it in series therefore the circuits need to be open uh, so imagine this is uh, the circuit that you want to measure right so you have a battery your emf you have a resistance load which is uh, here a lamp if you want to measure the current inside the circuit what we need to do is that we need to open the circuit and flow place uh, the ammeter uh, in series so you need to open and place it uh, so the step that you need to go through is basically you need to turn off disconnect the circuit from the power supply first and you need to open the circuit open the circuit means you open up a connection over here uh, in between battery and the bulbs and then you place uh, you place the instrument of measurement uh, inside it so place the probe of emitter in a manner to close the circuit so you close the circuit with the emitter in the middle so opening the circuit the action of opening the circuit we call it as break the circuit right so <clears throat> in case if you are using a multimeter so because uh, you might use uh, an instrument that is uh, the, uh, the, the only purpose is emitter but usually what you find today very very cheaply you can even find it in DIY shop for example what you have in your hand is basically uh, like what we see uh, here it is not just uh, an emitter it's basically a multimeter where you have knob where you can choose whether you want to measure current or voltages in AC in DC or even measures other things such as temperature and resistance so what you need to do if in case if you're using your multimeter so later for if you you have to do a certain type of experiment in the lab you need to make sure that the current measurement was selected so you need to make sure for example this is your multimeter so you break the circuit i'm sorry i have my picture over here so basically my video over here so basically beside behind my video over here you have your load box so you break the circuit and you place your probe uh, your probe so your, your, your pen of measurement in between the bulbs and the battery and then uh, you connect it to a proper uh, channel so you have com is for ground a for emitter and not go branch it on b uh, 
and then you have to basically select uh, select uh, in your knob select the measurement of uh, current in for example here if it's battery then it's in DC so current in DC uh, be careful it's very important to put your probe here in uh, current measurement this is need to be paid attention to not to be put in voltage why because we know that uh, in current uh, if you measure the current and you put in current uh, the amount of current can that can go through it is uh, you can allow current to go through it but in voltmeter we know that if you are using voltmeter you don't want to you don't want to have the current to go inside the, the galvanometer so if you put it here and you let through current into your voltmeter then uh, usually what will happen is that your multimeter will uh, will be damaged okay so instead of using a multimeter like this with two probes you may also find basically what we call a clamp meter clamp meter basically you have a clamp like a crap clamp right you can open it up and you can put the conductor uh, uh, in which you want to measure the current to go through uh, so it can display directly uh, the, the current so the advantage of this is that you don't have to what we call break the circuit you just bring your clamp meter and then you clamp it onto the, imagine it as your conductor you bring a clamp meter and you just clamp it around and uh, using, using the properties of magnetic field around the conductor they will basically measure the, uh, the current so it's a, in, in, an easier tool but of course it's uh, a bit more expensive than using the usual uh, multimeter. So uh, for using voltmeter, it's the same uh, basically instruction, uh, but it is much easier because the circuit does not uh, doesn't need to be broken or uh, no modification to the circuit. So imagine if you have a battery connected to a load which is a bulb here, yeah? if you want to measure the voltages across or the potential difference between the the, the resistance, the two point between the the load. What you need to do is, of course, make sure that your probe uh, branches towards the ground and voltage measurement, and then you put your probe on the two points. So you don't need to break uh, the circuit uh, to turn off power supply, so it's much easier. So uh, measuring voltages uh, is uh, much easier, and and you just need to pay attention to put it in, in volt because if you put it in m, you won't be able to measure anything. Okay. Uh, so here we have an example just to train you on on basically identifying uh, how to measure this uh, these two parameters of voltage and currents right and then uh, basically uh, it helps you in understanding better the definition so current is flow rate of uh, charges so you need to be inside so in series if you're measuring potential difference it is basically the difference of energy between two points so you need to be outside the circuit to be measured in in parallel so this is a simple exercise that uh, we may try together you can try it on your own so for example for this following circuit it's a very simple circuit uh, place an instrument to measure uh, these things right so uh, you have a power supply over here might be a battery or a lead power supply and then you have two loads, uh, two lamp, we call lamp one and lamp two. So the first question is, uh, let's say uh, measure the current supply. So the current supply is basically the current that goes out the power supply and then get into the two lamps to go back into the power supply. So how do you measure it? So it's easy, you put a, an emitter in series with the power supply. Second one, measure current uh, through the lamp, lamp one. You just put emitter in series with lamp one measure current through lamp 2, it measures in series with lamp 2. And as we can imagine, basically when we say in series, putting it over here before the lamp, after lamp 1 or after lamp 2, it is basically the same thing. Because the flow of uh, charges that circulate inside the circuit, it is always inside the same conductor. So imagine you measuring the, the flow rate of uh, water inside a pipe. This is the same pipe, so the flow rate is basically if uh, there is condition where there is no uh, no leakage, we assume that there is no leakages of current. Uh, what happens is basically the current will be the same uh, across the circuit. So that's what we call in series. The current will all be equal. So measuring it over here, here, or here, it's basically the same thing. But of course, uh, if you we say that you want to measure the current of the supply, it is better to place it as close as possible uh, to the to the supply, right? Okay, so voltages, how do you measure the voltages? So if you want to measure the voltage of the supply uh, supply voltage, or what we call as EMF, you need to put it in, 
in series with the voltage supply. If you want to measure voltage across lambda, uh, lamb one, uh, you need to place your voltmeter in series. So this is in series of lamp one, voltage across lamp two in series with lamp two. So in terms of voltages, it is not the same. Uh, the, when we say we measure the potential difference between two points, so these two points is not the same thing as these two points. Why? Because these two points is uh, it measures the difference of energy between uh, the power supply, whereas these two points measure the difference potential between uh, this lamp and these voltages over here measures the potential difference between lamp number lamp number two. So the, the the voltages is higher over here because the energy supply is higher. But here is basically it measures the energy or the voltages, not the energy. So voltages is energy per charge. So here it measures the voltage of the lamp that is consumed by the lamp, lamp one here for the lamp two. Right? So here there is uh, another example. So we have a circuit. Basically, we have a supply, a DC supply. Uh, it is supplying uh, power to three resistors. Resistance R1 and then we have resistance R2, R2 and R3 in in what we call in parallel, right? So it's a bit trickier, but it still uses the same principle. So how do we measure the current supply? Put an emitter with, uh, in series with the power supply. Current through R2, you need to put emitter uh, in series with R2. Current through R3, we need to put emitter in series with R3. Voltage supply again it is in parallel, so voltage supply parallel with the power supply, voltage across R2, voltage uh, voltmeter in parallel with R2, voltage across R3, uh, voltmeter in parallel with R3. It's simple. So now that we have uh, uh, go thoroughly through the definition of vol voltages and current, voltage and current, and we have looked at uh, the measurement, how we measure the instrumentation and the units. So let's talk about the the parameters that relate the voltages and current, which is basically resistance. So resistance, the unit SI for resistance is in ohm with the Greek, uh, Greek letter ohm, omega. Uh, so what is the definition of having one ohm? So one ohm is basically defined as the resistance between two points. So imagine you have a conductor, the resistance is always measured on a uh, certain portion. Uh, so in between these two points, uh, if uh, one ohm is defined as if you uh, supply to that uh, supply to that a portion of circuit with one volt, uh, it is resulting in one amps of current. So imagine uh, this is the component that I want to measure the resistance. If I supply uh, with a battery of one volt and I measure the current, if the current inside it is one amp, this component we're gonna call it as having one ohm of resistance. Okay. So the relationship between the two uh, uh, voltages and current with a resistance is basically U, the voltage in volts, equals to R multiplied by I. So R is basically the proportionality uh, coefficient between U and I. So if, if basically if U is constant, if you have uh, increased R, then uh, you will have uh, basically decreasing I, right? So it is the coefficient of proportionality and relationship between voltages and, and current. So following this relation, basically we can also, uh, uh, we say that U equals to RI or U equals to IR is the same thing. So I, I prefer to use U usually, you can see it's sometimes V or sometimes U, but I prefer to use U. In textbooks, usually they use V. Uh, I prefer to use U because uh, basically in examination, I don't want you to be confused with the unit volts. Because unit volts is written in V, so the, the parameter voltage usually, usually I write it as U. So U and V is basically the same thing, the voltages, but uh, it is preferred for me to, re to be written as U. Uh, so we can also, uh, we know that uh, the power uh, in electrical is basically the product of uh, the flow rate and the potential difference, I multiplied by U. So if you replace U with uh, RI or IR, you will get basically the power uh, dissipated by a component where you have a current that goes through it is equals to RI square or I square R, right? Uh, so resistance is that uh, definition of the connection between uh, voltage and current uh, and it can be written as well as uh, the power dissipated by, by the component that is using that voltage and current.
So uh, that is resistance, but the inverse of resistance can also be defined. So if you write, for example, 1 over R, if you have R, if you do the calculation of 1 over R, it's what we call conductance. Okay. So resistance, what is, the res what is resistance? Resistance is the measure, the measure of how difficult it is to get a current through it. So it means if you have higher R at a constant U, as I mentioned just now, if you have higher R, then the current will be lower. So it means it measures basically the, uh, the resistance or the difficulty of the current to go through. If you have a higher resistance, then it will be hard for the current to go through. If you have a smaller resistance, then you, it will be easier for the current to go through that, that portion of circuit or, or component or a load. Uh, so, uh, with that, we can also define conductance. Conductance is the inverse of uh, resistance. So, it is the measurement of how easy it is to pass, to get current pass through the component. So, it is, it is calculated as 1 over R and it is noted usually as G, conductance as G. And the units is basically it's 1 over O or there is a name also for it. It's called in Siemens, in Siemens conductance. Okay. So, um, having known what resistance is, of course, the next thing that comes uh, naturally is basically to discuss about Ohm law, right? So, Ohm law is something that was found, uh, observed by George Ohm in Munich in 1827. So, he found that uh, potential difference across a component, across a conductor like this. Uh, so, imagine you take a conductor, the potential difference or the voltages, so you're measuring the voltage, the potential difference across this uh, conductor is proportional to the current that circulate in the circuit. So this is the circuit. You have uh, you have a power supply, a uh, voltage supply. You supply the voltages through this circuit to the conductor. So basically, uh, we have uh, the image of the voltage like this because it is a variable voltage. Uh, what uh, John Ohm did was he 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 varies the voltages, so you can, can get the full voltages or minimum of voltages. So as he varies the voltages, he, he see that basically if he change the voltages, the current also change and it change basically proportionally. So if he plot, uh, what happens is that he plot the relationship between the, uh, the voltage and current. As he increase voltages, the current will also increase and he get this kind of curve, right? So this constant uh, uh, potential difference uh, divided by current. So if you do uh, the calculation of the slope, so imagine you take uh, this slope, you do basically the the, the division of uh, voltages over current. Uh, what you find is basically R. So U divided by I uh, across the slope is what we call R. This characteristic is what we call as a resistance. So Ohm law describes this proportionality. So here what we have here is basically the circuit that he used to to observe that this is the characteristic curve that relates between U, R, and, and I. So here we can do uh, several examples, several exercises. So of course, uh, exercises of Ohm law, if we just uh, do the calculation of U equals to R, I is pretty simple and direct. So the, the, the exercise over here is basically an exercise that includes uh, application of it. So uh, it might involve uh, something related to uh, mechanical or electrical other than just Ohm law. So for example, in this exercise, it, it says that a motor gives an output power of 20 kilowatts. So imagine you have a motor, uh, the power output is 20 kilowatt, and it operates with an efficiency of 80%. So what does it mean by efficiency? You have to know a bit, you have to find out. So efficiency is basically when you supply in input, uh, let's say uh, a power of 100 watt, at the output, you won't get 100 watt. So you, you, you imagine this is your motor, you're supplying with electrical energy 100 watt, but in output, you will not get mechanical energy of 100 watt, it will be only 80%, so 80 watt. So that's what you mean by efficiency of 80%. You will lose basically 20% of the power. So it says that the motor have an output power of 20 kilowatt. So it means that the input power uh, there's a loss of 20%, so the 100% power of electrical that get into it must be higher than must be higher than 20 kilowatt. So if the constant input voltage to the motor is 200 volt, so it says that if we are supplying 200 volt, what is the constant supply current? What is the current? So we know that power just now we mentioned power is the product of voltage and current. 
So the strategy is basically uh, to calculate the input power. How do we get the input power? Because input power is voltages multiplied by current. So if we have the input power, then we can know what current is. But input power, where do we get it? We get it, of course, from the output power and efficiency. Right? So the answer is basically, if we get the output power of 20 kilowatt, then input power must be higher. So it is output power divided by efficiency. 20 kilowatt divided by 0 0.8, we get uh, 25 kilowatt. So 25 kilowatt is basically the input power because 5 kilowatt was lost. We get only in output 20 kilowatt. So this input power in electrical is basically the voltages multiplied by the current. So if we know that the voltage was 200 volt, so we can deduce what the current is. Current is just the electrical input power divided by voltage. So it is 25 kilowatt divided by 200 volt. So we get as answer current in input current to the motor is equal to 125 amps, which is a very, very large current. Okay. Uh, we have another similar exercise where you can try it. So uh, it is related to mechanical. Uh, so we are in faculty of mechatronics. Uh, this is basically the kind of thing that you're gonna most probably look at later, uh, where we get the combination of mechanical and electrical at the same time. So it says that we have a 200 ton train uh, that experienced a wind resistance of equivalent of 62.5 newton per ton, the operating efficiency of the driving motors. So yeah, a train, uh, 200 ton, it goes through, uh, cutting through the wind to move. So uh, the, the, the forces of the wind uh, is equivalent to 62.5 newton per ton. So for each ton of, uh, of train, it will experience 62.5 newton of uh, of forces, wind forces. So if you have 200 times, then you just multiply 200 by uh, 62.5 newton. So you, you get the total amount of forces that you need to go through. So it says the operating efficiency of driving motor. So it is an electrical train. Uh, the efficiency of driving motor is 0 0.87, right? And the cost of electrical energy is 8 pence or 8 cents per kilowatt hour. So this is a very specific question of cost. What is the cost of the energy required to make the train travel one kilometer? So it asks, what is the cost of energy that you need per, per, per kilometer? And then there's another question. If the train is supplied at a constant voltage of 1.5 kilovolt and travels with a velocity of 80 km per hour, what is the supply current? So this is quite a lengthy exercise. You can try to look at it in the slide uh, step by step. So what happened is basically what we need to do is we need to calculate the work or the energy. So uh, the energy in input that we have to put into the train in order to move, right? So we know that uh, energy output is basically a mechanical energy in output. Uh, if you have a, an object moving, the energy is basically uh, the force multiplied by uh, by the distance travel, right? So the force, what is force? Force is basically the mass, 200 tons, uh, multiplied by, uh, I mean the force is basically, not uh, uh, so the force is the mass multiplied by the aerodynamic force, which we mentioned just now, 200 multiplied by 62.5 uh, Newton per ton, and then multiplied by the distance, 1 kilometer, so it's 1000 meter, so we get the energy that we need to move the train for 1 kilometer is equals to 12.5 a mega joule, okay, mega joule. So if we need this kind of energy in output to move the train for one kilometer, in input it should be larger, right? Because we have the issue of efficiency, we have some losses. So in order to get it, it's basically we take the energy output or work output divided by efficiency. So uh, twelve point five mega joule divided by zero point eight seven. So in input to the motor, the energy that you need to supply, the work that you need to supply is basically 14.4, so it's larger than 12.5, 14.4 megajoules, okay? So now we get the energy input, but the question doesn't ask uh, what is uh, the energy, it asks us basically the cost of that energy. So if you know that uh, uh, the energy per kilowatt hour is 8 pence or 8 cents, what we need to do is basically uh, uh, convert the energy into uh, kilowatt hour. Uh, now the energy is in joule, we need to convert it in kilowatt hour. 
uh, we know by definition, so this is the definition of a conversion, just a conversion, uh, 1 kilowatt hour is basically 3.6 megajoule. So kilo because uh, kilo is 10 to the power 4 and then there is uh, 3.6 uh, basically due to the conversion of hour to uh, of hour to uh, two seconds, right? Because one hour equals to uh, 60 multiplied by 60, so 3,600 second. So that is 3.6, and then uh, 3,600 means there is two zero. So instead of just kilo, when you add the, the multiplication, you get at the end one kilowatt hour uh, equals to 3.6 megajoule, right? So because the, the cost of the energy is given in kilowatt hour and in not in joule. So our energy that we, we are consuming to move our trains in kilowatt hour uh, is 14.4 uh, is that we mentioned just now. Uh, we need to divide by 3.6 which is 1 kilowatt hour. So we get it uh, in kilowatt hour. Our, our energy or work that we are using to move our train for 1 kilometer is 4 kilowatt hour. So basically, this 14.4 megajoule in kilowatt hour is 4 kilowatt hour. So this calculation is basically just the calculation of conversion between joules to kilowatt hour. So the cost of energy, if we are using 4 kilowatt hour, then we just have to multiply by the cost per kilowatt hour. The cost per kilowatt hour was mentioned at 8 pence. So 8 pence multiplied by 4, we got the energy equals to 32 pence. So 32 cents, like 32 cents. So 32 cents to move the train for one kilo, one kilometer. And then the next question is asked, so there is a second question, if the train is supplied a constant voltage of 1.5 kilovolt uh, and travels at a, with a velocity of 80 kilometer, what is the supply current? So it asks for currents. Uh, so what we need to, to know is basically, uh, the, the calculation that we had just now is basically to move uh, the train for one kilometer. So what work done uh, in one hour when moving at velocity of 80 km per hour is basically equals to uh, moving the train for 80 kilometers, right? So if you have 80 km per hour and you're doing the work for one hour, it means you have traveled 80 kilometers. So the energy that was spent just now for one kilometer, in one hour you will multiply by 80 to get the total energy. Uh, so the total energy, if you're moving it for one hour or 80 kilometers, it will become uh, basically multiplied by the time if you, you get the power, it becomes 320 uh, kilowatt of power input. Okay, so it becomes 320 kilowatt of power input. Uh, so this is the power because the question asks basically for current. And current, we know uh, the relation between current, power, and voltage is power equals to voltage is multiplied by the current. So now we get power. Uh, if we want to know uh, the current, therefore, it's just the power, power divided by voltage. So power, we have found just now 320 kilowatt divided by the voltage 1.5 kilovolt that was given. So we get the current uh, that we need to move it at the velocity of 80 km per hour is 214, 214 amps. So you can spend uh, quite some time to properly understand it. Uh, this is uh, mostly related to the calculation of power, and, uh, to the calculation of uh, energy in mechanical. So it's a bit of a combination of, of many things. Uh, you can spend uh, quite some time to, to go through it and to understand it properly. Okay, so uh, after having defined what Ohm law is and try to use it in different kind of application that may, might be more or less complex, uh, there is two things that you need to understand related to, to resistance. There is two uh, important circuit conditions uh, that can be defined by the measurement of the resistance. Okay, so our circuit, whether it can be either a complete uh, connecting circuit where the voltages and current, current can be uh, varied uh, in different ranges, but there are also two two uh, two very important condition, uh, extreme condition. We would say that you have to be able to identify uh, that could save you from some uh, some safety issues. Okay, so the first one is basically what we call uh, when the resistance is at a very very low value, tend towards zero. Okay, and the other condition is when the resistance tend to be very very high, uh, when it tends towards infinity. 
So the first one is the one that is dangerous. Uh, when we have a, a connecting circuit with the resistance that tends towards zero, what happens is that if you look at the Ohm law, U equals to Ri, if you have a supply voltage that is uh, constant, for example, if you have a battery, let's say at 24 volts, if you have your resistance very, very low, that tends towards zero, so the product of IR in order to make it uh, 24 volts, if R tends to a zero, then I will have to be very, very high. So if R tends to a zero, then I will be tends towards infinity. So if you have an infinity amount of current, that's what we call short circuit, a very, very high current in a very short uh, period of time. Right? Uh, the current just rise a peak quickly. That's what we call short circuit. So when does it happen? So it happened when R is 10 to a zero. R tends to a zero means it occurs when uh, two points are connected by conductor of zero resistance. Okay. So it means if you have power supply and you just connect without having any resistance in, in it. So imagine if you just connect wires between your positive terminal and negative terminal. That is that is not a good idea to do to do that. Because what you create is basically you create a short circuit and you create a very high amount of current circulating from plus terminal to negative terminal. So your conductor over here can be burned because there's a high amount of current that goes through it. If your conductor is a very small conductor, then it will be uh, it will be burned. And then uh, what happens is you might damage also your power supply, your source. Okay. So that's what we call short circuit when we just connect directly, like connect directly the positive terminal and negative terminal without any load in between. So you need to always make sure there is a load in between that consume energy in between uh, the, uh, the positive and negative terminal. So the other one is the opposite of it when you have a very very high resistance. So if you look at the relation I equals to U over R, if we have R that tends toward infinity, what happens is U, uh, I mean U, if U, U is constant and R tends toward infinity, very very high resistance, the, the ratio of u over r will tend towards zero so it means there will be no current at all right so if the resistance is too high it is the same as you have what we call an open circuit we call it as open circuit just now we call it as short circuit now we call it as open circuit this is not dangerous it's just that your circuit is uh, is not closed so there will be no current passing through it is an open circuit like you switch on uh, i mean switch off your light opening the circuit no connection between them so it occurs when you have a resistance, that, resistance in your circuit that tends toward infinity. So if you observing uh, no current law, it means inside the circuit there is somewhere a point of uh, infinity resistance. It means the circuit are not, not closed or not connected. Okay. So uh, after having uh, look at uh, the, the two extreme conditions of resistance, uh, let's now talk about the uh, the, 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 the building, uh, the construction of a resistance itself, or we call it a resistivity. So resistivity is basically the measurement how how much resistance can we get from uh, a certain uh, material or conductor. Okay. So the resistivity is the measure of uh, how of the resistance basically, and it basically depends on multiple criteria. Uh, other than, of course, there is the resistivity of the material, what we call rho. Resistivity of the material depends, of course, on the uh, on the type of material that you have. For example, if you have copper, it is a low resistivity material, material that have a very small electrical resistivity, so it conducts uh, current uh, smoothly. So, if you take copper, the resistance of copper will be very very small, right? Because the resistivity of the material which we call rho is very very low. But there are other, the other than resistivity, for example, even we take only copper, uh, it, it doesn't just depend on the characteristic of resistivity of the material, it depends on several other what we call as a, a geometrical parameter of that conductor as well. So resistance depends also, the first thing is it depends on length of the conductor. So how does it depend on it? It is proportional to the length of a conductor. So let's say we take this uh, figure over here on top right as the conductor. So we can we can see that there, there are there are several geometrical parameters. The first one is the length. Second one is the surface area on which through which uh, the, the current will go through, right? 
So uh, and then of course we have we have the metric characteristic of resistivity. So in in function of length, we say that uh, it is proportional with length, which mean which mean that if uh, we have uh, an increasing length, then the resistance will also be increased. So if you have a conductor that is longer, uh, then the resistance will so be higher. So it's easy to understand, right? So if have if you have a, a longer section to go through, then you have a lot of thing that you have to uh, to there will be a lot of thing that you encounter and you have to resist to. So uh, the longer the material is, the longer the material is, then uh, the the higher the resistance will be. So if you want to uh, reduce the resistance, uh, therefore because you know just now the power is equals to R i square. If you want to lose to, to, to reduce the consumption of energy, to reduce the power, then you have to reduce as much as possible the resistance. Therefore, what you need to do is basically to reduce the length of your circuit. So you need to put your uh, power supply as close as possible to the load that you want to consume the, the, the energy, right? Uh, so it is proportional, we say that it's proportional to length. And of course, there is an example over here that we can look at. A cable consists of two conductors, which for the purpose of a test are connected together at one end of the cable. The combined loop resistance, so loop resistance means the total resistance inside the circuit, measured from the other end is found to be 100 ohm when the cable is 700 meter long. Calculate the resistance of 8 kilometer of similar cable. So basically, we have a cable over here. The resistance, if it is 700 meter long, is 100 ohm. It asks us, what, what, what is the measure of a resistance if the cable is now 8 kilometers? So uh, basically, uh, it is proportional if resistance is uh, 1, uh, I mean, if, if the resistance is 100 ohm uh, correspond to the length of uh, 700 meter, then the resistance uh, for 8 kilometer will be proportional to 8 kilometers. So we can write as R1 over R2 equals to L1 over L2 with R1 and L1 equals to 700 meters and 100 ohm and L2 equals to 8 kilometers. So at the end you get basically the ratio of 125 by 8 kilometer divided by 700 meter which equals to 1.143 kilo ohm. So imagine the 700 meter longs have a resistance only of 100 ohm but if you multiply the length of more than 10 you get, of course, more than 10 of the resistance. Now you have 1.143 kilo ohm, or 1,143. So another thing, uh, just now we have seen length, but now it's also uh, related to the surface area or the section area over here. So the section here or the surface area is basically uh, uh, <coughs> a, a, a round, a circle, because it is, the conductor is in cylindrical. So it is, uh, in um, in function of A, it's not like in length. In length, just now, the longer it is, then uh, the higher the resistance. But in surface area, the larger the A, then the lower will be the the lower will be the uh, the resistance. Okay. So it's easy to imagine. Imagine it's a it's a, a, a conduct of fluid. If you have a a tube where you want to circulate water inside it, if you have a very small tube pipe. What happens is very hard for the water to go through it, right? Because uh, the space is very small. The amount of water, the same amount of water that that, that you are pushing through the through the pipe will be uh, will will basically experience a lot of resistance. But if you have a larger pipe, then the water will uh, the water will circulate inside it easier, right? So it's the same thing for charges. Uh, if you have a larger conductor, so the surface area of A is larger then the resistance will also be smaller. So there is a, also a, a sample of question over here that you can have a look at uh, that define uh, basically that, uh, that help us in understanding the relation between the surface area A and the resisti resistance of a resistance of the, <coughs> uh, the conductor. So it is what we call inversely proportional. It is inversely proportional. Uh, the higher the surface area A, and the lower will be the resistance. So if you increase A, what happens is the resistance will be smaller, right? So as we increase A, the resistance will be smaller. And finally, as we mentioned in the beginning, <coughs> in the, beginning the last parameter is basically the resistivity of the material itself. 
of course it depends and proportional to to the resistivity rho so here in the table below you have basically uh, the usual value of resistivity in ohmmeter at zero degree celsius of different parameter aluminium brass copper uh, carbon and tungsten so basically if you look at uh, for example the usual material that we use for conductor is copper where it has a very very low resistivity but if you look at uh, other materials that are not usually used as uh, as as uh, as conductors so for example for carbon carbon it has a very high resistivity uh, so carbon is basically the material where, that we may use in resistance that we use in lab uh, resistance are made of uh, some of them are made of carbon so <coughs> it depends on re resistivity so as we mentioned just now if you combine all of them uh, so in terms of resistivity the higher the resistivity of the material then the higher will be the resistance of that component so if you combine all of them uh, resistivity length and surface area we get the correlation of this so the resistance if you want to know the value of resistance is basically the product of resistivity multiplied by the length divided by the surface area so higher resistivity will give a higher resistance higher length will get higher resistance but higher surface area the larger the, the conductor will get a, will give a lower resistance so here there is an example of question uh, that you may try uh, do on yourself if you look at the slide that i attach with the video in your google classroom and then there is another thing that uh, it's not just uh, the three parameters of resistivity uh, length and the surface area it also depends on one external parameter which is the temperature so we call it as temperature coefficient of resistance because uh, if you look at the graph over here uh, in x axis we have temperature and y axis we have the resistance so this is a graph explaining the observation of variation of resistance as a function of temperature as temperature increase we see that the, the, the resistance is also increased so if you place your component inside a, a higher ambient temperature then your resistance is expected to be to be higher as well and of course there is a point of what we call uh, zero resistance it is basically at the point of uh, uh, superconductivity where we are close to or uh, we are close to a zero absolute degrees uh, zero kelvin right so what happened in in uh, in absolute zero is basically uh, the the atoms doesn't move at all it doesn't vibrate so if you have charges that have to go through it then it doesn't have to encounter the, the vibration of those atoms it's very easy to go through that's what we call superconductivity but in reality of course we are placed more in the uh, let's say uh, we'll take a lab temperature of 20 degree you have a certain value of resistance over there right so the resistance of all pure metals increase uh, with the increase of temperature resistance of uh, components such as carbon electrolytes and insulating material uh, is the opposite so for insulating materials basically uh the, the 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 higher the temperature the resistance will be lower because you basically uh you uh, you disintegrate the the atom so there's there will be more um liberty for the charges to go through it and then uh what we call the ratio of change of resistance per degree is what we call as alpha so this is basically the parameter that we use in order to identify the, this, the variation of resistance in function of temperature we call it ratio of change of resistance per degree is noted as alpha and alpha is given at a specific temperature so for each material so if you look at uh, this table over here at the, at the bottom over here or we usually you can find uh, this parameter of alpha zero so alpha zero is what we call as the ratio of temperature and resistance right and it is given when when the material is at zero degree so for different materials uh, for example here ranging from aluminium copper and, uh, and to, to brass you have basically the, the value or the ratio of uh, the, 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 the connection between uh, resistance and temperature right so it could be given for example here at zero degree but you can also have alpha you may find tables that give alpha at 20 degree as well so the, 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 the relation or the equation that you uh, that we may use uh, that relate between resistance and temperature uh, can be calculated using uh, these two uh, particular equation so the first one is basically uh, the resistivity if you have uh, the, the 
the same material at two temperature of theta 1 and theta 2. So resistant 1 over resistance 2. So imagine resistance 1 is at lower degree, lower temperature, R2 is at higher temperature. The ratio of R1 over R2 is equal to 1 plus alpha 0 theta 1. So the temperature at R1, uh, where you measure R1, divided by 1 plus alpha 0 theta 2 when uh, the temperature at theta 2, the resistance is R2. Right? So if you know R1, for example, and theta 1, uh, if you want to know R2 at uh, another temperature of theta 2, then you can use this, this equation. And then uh, if you have, for example, your alpha is given at, alpha, at 20 degree, you also have this uh, correlation where the resistance uh, of, the, of the material at any temperature T equal to the resistance at temperature 20 degree. So usually we know this is given the resistance of temperature at 20 degree multiplied by 1 plus alpha 20. So alpha 20 you could find in, a, such, in such table but it is alpha 20 instead of alpha 0. Um, multiply by the temperature if you, to find, you want to find RT uh, minus by 20. So imagine if we know R20 and we know alpha 20 and we want to know the temperature of this material R at temperature of 100 degree. So what you need to do is basically you just replace theta with 100 and you calculate using this formula and you get the resistance of that material at 100, 100 degree. So here we have uh, an example of exercise. Uh, I hope you can have a look at it. Uh, so it says that a coil of copper wire has a resistance of 200 ohm when it means temperature is zero. So it means at zero it is 200 ohm. The question asks calculate the resistance of the coil when its mean temperature is 80 degree. So resistance 200 ohm at zero. If it is 80 degree, what is the resistance? So we need to know what alpha zero is. So alpha zero from this table of copper, it gives it, it gives us uh, alpha zero equals to 0 0.00428. So we can use basically uh, the second equation that we use now, but instead of R20, it's R0. So R1 that we want to find equals to R0, initial resistance of R0. R0 just now is 200 ohm, multiply by 1 plus alpha zero, 0, 0.00428 multiply by theta 1, so the theta at which you want to know the temperature, uh, 80 degree. So you do the calculation, you get 268.5 ohm. So imagine at 0 degree, it was 200 ohm, but at 80 degree, you add 80 degree of temperature, you have add basically 68.5 ohm to it. So it is not negligible, uh, depending on material and the difference of temperature. The additional... Uh, and resistance might be important. So here another question which you might try is the same uh, kind of equation. I suggest for you to try it on your own. Please uh, take the lecture slide and try to do it. So in practical, when you want to use a, a resistor in a circuit, basically you will find multiple form of resistor. This is one example of it. This is a metal film resistor. So uh, resistors are basically the component that provides resistance in your circuit that you put inside your circuit and we assume usually the the value of that resistance or the, the ratio of voltage over current is linear, is assumed to be linear, right? And then uh, they are usually made of uh, semiconductors uh, uh, that are non-linear and then the resistance are usually of course as we mentioned just now it is temperature dependent, so therefore, if you look at uh, a data sheet for, for, for a resistor, when you want to buy a resistor for your circuit, uh, you find out the first thing that you need to evaluate is basically the power dissipation of the resistor, so the amount of power that it can be, uh, it can dissipate. So imagine for this small kind of uh, metal film resistor, uh, the power rating, we call it as power rating, is, uh, is at 2 watt. 2 watt is very small, it means if you circulate a 2 volt across it, then uh, only one amp can be can be drawn uh, by the resistor. Cannot draw more than one amps. Uh, and then, of course, uh, there is other characteristic that we may find. For example, uh, it says it has a low TCR. TCR is basically temperature coefficient relation. So here it is indicated in uh, basically plus minus ppm per degree. Ppm per degree means a part per million uh, per degree Celsius. Uh, so it means it's 5 over 1 million, uh, the, the value of resistance is ohm change uh, 5 per 1 million for each uh, 
uh, degree Celsius increase. So imagine if you increase by one degree, it's five or one million ohm will be changed. Okay. So this is one of, of the uh, uh, of the usual resistance that you might find. And of course, there are other forms, uh, different types of construction that you may find as well in, in the lab. Uh, so the one that we've seen just now is basically the one that looks like this. It was a metal uh, film. Here we have a carbon film resistor, so power rating of around 0 0.25 watt. So this is something that you may find in on the website, for example. Uh, different type of construction, you find fixed resistor. This is what we call fixed resistor, mostly made of carbon molding. So this one is carbon, just now metal oxide films. Uh, they are low power, uh, they have low power ratings, 0 0.25 watt, just now it was 2 watt uh, and they are used basically in electronic circuits because in electronic circuits basically you don't uh, consume a lot of uh, lot of energy uh, the current circulating in it is the order of milliamps so uh, the, the smaller power rating is sufficient uh, but of course you have a larger resistance that are made of uh, probably of a wire wound resistor so wire one resistor, you can find something that looks like this. Wire one resistor is basically uh, inside this. So uh, uh, at, at, at the housing here, what you have is basically it's an aluminium casing with a uh, metal with a fins. Uh, so basically the fins serve to cool down the resistance because you know resistance consume energy and uh, the energy is R I square. The larger the R, uh, I mean R multiplied by I square. So that's the amount of energy that is dissipated. So in this case, you see, it is much, much larger power rating, 150 watt. So if it is 150 watt, it means it will heat up. I'm sorry, it will heat up. So that's why we have all these fins, what we call as cooling fins. So this the power rating for this wire, wire one resistor can be ranging from 1 watt to 20 watt. This one is basically 150 watt. They can be made of a fine nichrome wire or ceramic former. Uh, this is a wire one as well, so this is uh, 200 watt, uh, similar, and then we have a, a, a larger one which are made of cast iron or metal bars, they are simply just metal bars, we, we pass current inside them, so they can basically uh, consume up to hundreds of watts uh, or even more. And then uh, in between them, uh, I mean not in between, for all the types uh, of wire one or cast uh, or wire one basically usually, what we can have is not a fixed resistance, but we can have what we call a variable resistor of or potentiometer. Potentiometer. So here on top over here is what we call a, a potentiometer. Potentiometer means you have a knob where you can uh, you you can uh, rotate the knobs and you change the value of resistance inside it. So it is what we call a variable resistor. Uh, with a wiper arm. Wiper arm means it basically uh, it's uh, so the symbol is over here, variable resistor. This is what we call the wiper arm. So wiper arm basically is the contact between the conductor with the resistive material. So if you move around it, as you mentioned just now, if you have a larger length, then you have higher resistor. If you have a smaller length, if it, imagine that the resistor is like this, you have a, a metal conductor uh, that is a clay current. If you take through all the length of the conductor, then the resistance will be high. If you only take a portion of the conductor, a small portion, then the resistance will be low. So that's what we call a variable resistor. In this slide, you may find as well, basically, there is a link uh, to a YouTube video that shows you how a variable resistor works. So I suggest for you to look at it uh, for more information regarding variable resistor. Uh, and for the uh, the resistor coding of a smaller power rating resistor such as carbon and metal oxide film, so we have the usual uh, I mean resistor uh, color codes uh, as you have learned probably in high school. There are color bands that indicate basically uh, the first uh, a few color bands that indicate basically the value, and then there is uh, the 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 other band that indicates the multiplier. Either it is a uh, uh, kilo ohm or uh, mega ohm, right? And then there is uh, the indication of tolerance and temperature coefficient. Sometimes uh, some doesn't have tolerance and even temperature coefficient. But uh, you can refer to this uh, kind of basically table to read uh, the value of resistor of uh, this kind of metal oxide film or carbon film uh, resistors, right? So that's all about resistance. Um, so I hope you have learned. Uh, I mean, uh, sufficient things uh, to understand when you use a resistor is not just a certain value of ohm. Uh, it varies with uh, with temperature, it's sensitive to a temperature. Uh, it is depending on uh, rho, L, and A. 
uh, and basically the most important thing is that it is uh, the thing that, that that relates between your voltage and and current that's all for this week thank you very much and uh, we will see you in the tutorial session uh,